Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Durr. I'm a practicing chiropractor for the last 12 years. And chiropractic has espoused a formula for health over the last 120 years that involves eating right, exercising, getting rest, managing stress, and taking care of your spine and nervous system. What I found is that people want to be healthy. They just don't know how. So I have a degree in hotel and restaurant management. I have a career previous to being a chiropractor in the restaurant and hotel business. So I give a weekly workshop on health of some sort, eating right, exercising, managing stress, and so forth. So what I found is that people need instruction. And this seminar series is designed to teach you how to cook healthy, in particular soup. Now most people want to make an effort, and unfortunately they put a lot of effort and they have a poor result. They get discouraged and they turn to the fast food or what have you, because it's quick, it's easy, and they don't want to feel like a failure. So what I'm going to do in this series is teach you technique, efficiency, and how to produce quality, tasty, nutritious food in a short amount of time that will please your picky teenagers and yourself and make you more likely to be cooking healthy foods from now on. So one of the main challenges I've discovered, and through the years I started cooking classes in my office actually, cooking fish, cooking soup, cooking vegetables, all the things that you need in a healthy diet. Okay, something high in vegetable, high in lean protein, high in fruit, and so forth. And what I found is that people just are very inefficient. They put a lot of effort in, and they simply cannot produce a good meal in a short amount of time. So what I'm going to teach you now is the basics, the things you need to do, and the techniques you need to learn on how to produce good, healthy soup in a short amount of time. So the number one thing you need is a very good knife. Now, this is called a Santuku knife, or you could use a chef's knife. It has to be a good quality. All it needs to be is very sharp. All right, now a sharp knife is the only quality knife there is. It could be a hundred dollar knife, it's dull, it's no good to you. Okay? To keep it uh, an edge on the knife, you need what's called a steel. Now a steel will keep the edge from standing straight up. But if it's lost its edge, you're going to need to put it on a stone or a wheel of some sort. But if you feel the knife, and it feels resistant in one direction, and it feels smooth in the other, you know that the it's bent to one side. So what you're going to do is give a couple strokes to straighten that edge out. So if it feels resistance in both directions, you know that you've got a good sharp knife. That's the number one thing you need. The second thing you need is a good board. Now, there's a bit of controversy on whether plastic or wood is better. I prefer a hard wood like oak or maple, and I prefer a nice thick and big one. The reason I like a big board is I can produce vegetables and move them off to the side without having to mess around too much. Okay, A nice thick board that's treated with mineral oil every six months or so and washed with hot soapy water every time will not produce bacteria and will not absorb odor and will not dull your knives. Right? Plastic boards are made of petroleum, which I'm a little nefarious of, and, and they absorb odors right? and they start to warp and, and they discolor. So uh, I definitely produce, uh, I prefer a hardwood board. Now the next thing you need is a very good sturdy stock pot, soup pot here. Now this is a stainless steel and that's my preference, okay? This has a copper outside lining but it doesn't have to be, but it's thick. You can feel this thing has some weight to it, okay? So what's going to happen is it's not going to burn your food on the bottom, it's going to maintain heat around it, and it's going to produce a, a, a good steady simmer. Now one thing I would never use would be a non-stick aluminum. Anything with a black coating inside would never, I would never recommend cooking with. It, it, it leaches out um, the aluminum and the fluoride in some of the water and the tap water will cause aluminum to be leached out causing you know, unfortunately risk of Alzheimer's. So a stainless steel is my number one recommendation there. Okay. The next thing I recommend is a paddle. Now the reason I like a paddle is a flat edge and when you're stirring the soup on the bottom all right, it's going to get every bits and pieces on there. If you're using a, a spoon you're going to miss a lot and you could potentially burn some of the product in the bottom of, this, of the pan there. All right, so paddle is excellent uh, and, and necessary as well. The next thing is uh, an oil. Now, an, an oil could be olive, it could be canola, or it could be grapeseed. These two are non-flavorful, but very healthy oils. Olive oil has its own very distinctive, excellent flavor, I believe, but it's not always good in all soups. So you're going to use one of these three in what's called sweating. All right, so there are certain principles in cooking that you have to go over. One is the setup. You need all your tools in place in the right position. All right? But you also need a stock, which is either chicken, turkey, vegetable, what have you. And you need to have a healthy stock, a, a very tasty stock, 
or basically your soup is going to be bland. All right? You need to sweat. Okay? Sweating means sauteing your vegetables at a low heat so they reduce, uh, they reduce volume and they release liquid. The, the liquid hits the bottom of the pan, is converted from carbohydrate to starch, adds dip, depth of flavor and sweetness to it. All right? Sweating is different from sauteing. Sauteing is when you're going to try to brown and, and, and darken. Sweating is more kind of wilting and so forth. So there are certain vegetables that need to be sweated, certain ones that don't. We're going to go over that in this series today. Next step is the mirepoix. Now mirepoix is the base of every soup. Three ingredients for mirepoix are carrot, onion, and celery. All right, that is your basic mirepoix. Now there's a Cajun mirepoix that has green pepper or bell pepper in place of the carrot. But most of the time you're looking at onion, celery, and carrot. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate how you, you prepare those right now. Now I wanna talk about the station setup and you'll notice here I have the sink on my right, the cooking surface on my left. I like a big deep sink with a, a big gooseneck faucet so that I can have a lot of access into this area. Now I have disposal and this, is, this serves as a couple of purposes. This will speed you up. If you are right-handed, you sweep right into the sink all your discarded parts of the vegetable and you move to the board on the left all the prepared parts. And this is going to be more efficient, the cleanup and, and the preparation are much more efficient. Now, talking about the knife, you want to make sure that you're holding it properly. So you want to grip with your thumb and forefinger at the right at the base here and then wrap three fingers around the hosel, okay? And you want to keep your fingers tucked underneath and you want to keep this part of your finger in contact with the knife at all times. If you do that, you keep your fingers under and particularly your thumb underneath, you will never cut yourself, okay? So let's demonstrate how you cut the mirepoix. Now, mirepoix, the first thing is the onion, okay? The onion has a corn and it has a root at the other end. You want to cut lengthwise through the onion, okay? You want to cut a bit of the corn off and a bit of the end there. And you want to grab the corner and peel that piece of onion there. See how the, the sink adds to the speed here? I'm just disposing of this card as I move here, okay? You grab the edge and you want to take off any of the dried out skin there. From there, the onion has a corn, you see there, all right? This corn is going to help you. It's going to keep the onion together as you prepare it. So you're going to put this side down on the board. You're going to put your hand on top. Again, you're going to draw horizontally three or four times through the onion lengthwise. Then you're going to turn it and make vertical slices. Then you want to turn it 90 degrees and make slices there. And then you want to cut around the corn and dispose the corn like that. Now, see this nice big board? I can put these onions over here while I can still produce other vegetables. Now, the celery, the other part of the mirepoix. You're going to cough the dead part of the roots here. And you want to keep the whole celery intact. You want, I washed this already. You want to make sure there's no sand or dirt. And keeping it together serves as Notice I'm keeping my fingers underneath, my hands in contact with the knife. There's no chance of cutting yourself, okay? Now the third aspect of the mirepoix is the carrot, all right? So you want to grab the carrot by its thinner end. You want to hold the thick end down, aimed at the sink, and you're going to peel the carrot right into the sink, all in one motion. Again, efficiency is just as important as flavor because it's going to make sure that you're more likely to do this again because it's not going to take three days to produce something, okay? You want to cut it in half and half again. Again, keep your fingers under, just like that. You want to cut it in quarters. If it's a small carrot, you cut it in half. Turn it and keep your fingers underneath. And there you have. That's how you produce the mirepoix. And from here, you're ready to start the rest of the